Hello guys and welcome back to my channel where I talk about Japan, the JET program, share my experiences and opinions, and showcase my travel. If any of that interests you, then be sure to subscribe. So today I'm going to talk about my responsibilities as an ALT, really obvious stuff, the less frequent stuff, and the stuff which I didn't expect to be doing before I came here. Is Exodia the Forbidden One? Ah. What the? Make sure you stick around so you can hear all of that. And I'm just gonna go straight into it. The first responsibility is the most obvious. It's all year round and that is making lesson plans and teaching those lessons, obviously. 16 classes a week I teach, but three different lessons I'm teaching in a week, which I have to keep preparing. I guess some ALTs are unfortunately just used as like a tape recorder. Hi, so-so, thanks. How you doing? My other main responsibility, ESS club, or the English club, which again, I think probably the majority of ALTs have to do. That is if there is students in your club at that school. For me, I only have three second year girls that attend. It's very simple. I just stay behind a little bit after school on a Thursday. They come to the English classroom. We chat a little bit in English, catch up and play some games. And it doesn't have to be English games. We'll just play like card games or Jenga or whatever the, the girls feel like playing. And I really enjoy that because it's like just a much more relaxed atmosphere than in the classroom. No pressure, just chill and like it's nice to communicate with the students in that context. Something which no one told me and I didn't expect but I also wasn't surprised by the Japanese English teachers will ask you questions about English because a lot of them their English is not the best, which is fine, but <laughs> it's always funny, especially like when they're in the middle of marking exams and tests and stuff and they're not sure if they can give a point to a certain answer, if it's correct or not. So they'll come to me and they'll ask me and I'll be able to tell them, oh yeah, that's right or oh, that's wrong. But then sometimes they ask me why and you see in those situations, I am often at a loss because let me let you in on a little secret. I'm not very good at I'm a native speaker, so like, I naturally know when something is right or wrong, but I don't know the ins and outs for a lot of the detailed grammar stuff which the kids here learn, which is stupid, I think, that they focus on so much, but um, you know, that's a whole other video. Be prepared for that. I do usually go out of my way when I don't know how to give a why to like, try and search online or message some other ALTs, see if anyone can tell me, and then I'll relay that back to the teacher. But uh, yeah, that's always uh, an interesting one when I have to actually stop and, and think about why something makes sense, and I'm like, oh, I've never, my brain's never thought about this before, what is this? On occasion, I'll have to grade as well, like if the teacher's workload's a lot or something and they're trying to pawn something off on me to grade. And like, that's fine, I have no problems with that. But one thing I hate is that they always give that kind of stuff to me so spontaneously. I always like plan my free periods around when I'll be planning for future lessons. And so when they come at me with a pile of grading, like, oh hey, could do you mind doing this for like tomorrow or something, I'm like, I mean, I can, but now I need to find time to plan this lesson at another time and that lesson's all tomorrow. Oh my god. Just give me like a couple days notice. That's all I ask. One responsibility which is more irregular but that I do know about, it's not spontaneous, is making a portion of the exam. With the kid's English exam at the end of each semester, I make a small portion of it, maybe like 15% worth of the grade based on the classes which I teach. But this is actually until until this semester, this has been my least favorite responsibility because my classes are speaking focused. I'm just trying to communicate with them and I spend the whole time telling them, don't worry about mistakes, like just try. As long as I understand you, then I don't care if you make some small stupid mistakes, some grammar mistakes, whatever. I'm trying to build up their confidence and stuff. And then I have to make a small written exam, which is difficult in itself because I've not been teaching them grammar and stuff. And then when I go to grade that, I have to deduct points for all their mistakes and I don't have a choice in that matter. I'm told like, oh that's wrong, that's a mistake, you have to deduct a point. So then they end up with low scores because I've not been teaching them grammar so the topics we cover they don't know the, the grammar for. And then they're discouraged, they're shy, and it like cancels out all the confidence building I've been working on all semester. It doesn't make sense. So the first time I did that, I definitely learned my lesson because the students were shook at their grade. Oh my god! No! 
I felt so bad and guilty, so then after that, every test I made was significantly simpler. It's so pointless to do a written test for a speaking class, like that doesn't make sense. But the teachers were adamant about it until this semester. So we have new teachers now because it's a new school year, and this year I've been doing an interview test with the first years, finally. And I'm really enjoying that because it's such a, a simple test and the goal is not to like have them learn a bunch of new English, but just to make them more comfortable speaking to me in English. You can hear a little bit more about that in my social distance teaching video, I think that's what it was called, which I'll link here, which you can click on. My final responsibility, which is only once a year, but is also my favourite responsibility, is training kids for speech contests. I love this responsibility because even though it means during that period of time maybe like around a month, you'll be doing a lot of extra hours after school. It is the most rewarding part of the job. You're so focused on maybe like one to three students. You spend so much time with them working on the same thing. You see a huge improvement in that time. Because when it's a whole class, it's not as easy to notice improvements. But with this, you really, really see improvements. You feel a sense of accomplishment. You see how happy the kids are when they do well, you get to see them at the contest perform in front of an audience, it's really really nice and pleasant and I love that. I made a video talking about that I'm sure as well, so if... I think I did. <laughs> so if that ex if that exists, I will link it here. Obviously, every situation is different, blah blah blah, as you hear all the time on Jet Program. But actually, I have four or five videos in a series where I interview different ALTs about their school situation and they talk me through one of their lessons. So if you're interested to see what other ALTs get up to, and I try and find ALTs who have quite different schools to mine, you can click here and you'll find a whole playlist of all of those videos. I'm posting them like once a month. So, uh, yeah, check those out. So, did my responsibilities at school match your expectations or surprise you? Comment below. And if you are an ALT already, then how are your responsibilities different? Also, comment below, because I'm actually really curious to hear about the differences in other schools and stuff. So yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, then leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button. I will see you in the next one.